Hey, hello. We are going to begin with some top secret information. And that is um, a revelation. <laughs> Every time I get ready to start one of these podcasts, I have this, uh, there's this like butterfly in the stomach moment. And during that moment, my head is doing all kinds of strange things. And one of the things that happens almost without fail is I have this voice that I never used. To, I, I just say hello. But there's this other voice that I would say if I wasn't such a chicken. Well, today I say to heck with chickenitis. So the voice I was going to say, I was going to say, Allah, how are you? That's all. I don't know why. I don't know where it came from. But that was the voice that I was saying. And usually that's that moment where I'm kind of geeing myself up to begin the podcast so uh, now you know I do get uh, butterflies and all that so now we can begin the podcast so hello um, this is the official <laughs> okay this might go wrong today uh, this is the official part of the podcast when I was young I had this game I played called I wonder and the I won I don't know where it came from but I it was the solitary game so I'd just be somewhere I could be either in the tree in our garden or I could be anywhere and I'd look around and I'd see the things and I'd say oh, I wonder this or that I wonder that and that so I could look for example if there was a rabbit then I'd say I wonder what would happen if the rabbit could talk and so on and so forth so I'm going to try that again having not done it since goodness I think I'd stopped by the time I was 10 so that was a long, 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 long time ago. Anyway, I'm going to try the I wonder thing. And I'm going to make a slow-mo. That sounds really professional. A slow-mo. I'm going to make a slow-mo so you can see where I'm sitting. Because I don't know where, what it is. I mean, it's, I know where it is. I don't know what it's called. So I'm going to add... Um, ah, that's interesting. Yes. I'm going to... Sorry, I'm... <laughs> You're catching me suddenly coming up with a plan. The plan is to connect this audio to the slow-mo. So you see the slow-mo, but you also can hear the same audio. Anyway, yeah, so you'll see that. But the plan is to do an I wonder with the things I see around me. And I hope... See, if, if it's really silly, that usually means I have nothing to say. So if I suddenly say, oh, I wonder if the pier could take off and start flying, that means... I've run out of steam, so I hope I don't do that too often. Uh, <laughs> okay, the you have the Saint Nicholas Kirk, and you have this dome on the top, the big dome, and I don't know if there are eight arches. You see those little arches? So I wonder what would happen if out of those arches the arches could open up and out of them would be these super secure hammocks so you could hang out above the city you just hang there for let's say you could book half an hour of hanging out time so it's a bit similar to something i think i once mentioned to do with adam tower which we'll come to hopefully again so you hang out there on these super secure hammocks and that would just be you know just one of those methods of relaxation that exist in the city then you have this, I know it has to do with the boats, and it's this yellow, it's a square which is uh, with a black rim and a large letter K in. And so I wonder what would happen if that just kept showing all the letters of the alphabet. That's all it did, it just kept changing. So it would give us something to entertain ourselves, and though it may confuse the boat people. So even though that's a nice I wonder, then I have slightly to the left and up there's this cream building and on top of that there's this additional floor that had been added much later so it, it does look as if it was just plonked on there and to the right of that you have one window and it's covered with what seem to be cards, greeting cards so I wonder what would happen if those cards decided when they thought nobody was looking to have a dance all the way across those windows so back and forth so that would be a nice one. Now I'm going to go back in the other direction. I... Oh, yeah, that's, that's an easy one. The arches of Central Station. So you have now th uh, four arches. You have three which are actually part of the train station. 
then you have this northern arch which is where the buses that's the bus stops and also underneath the shops and also you can walk along there so at night it's sort of lit up a bit and you see the letters uh, you see the word Amsterdam across it so I wonder what would happen were those panels every single one of them to be like a, a, a pixel and they were able to send messages you know you could have some positive message that you could send to the northern city of Amsterdam so anybody coming from the north would read your messages so I wonder what would happen if that was possible then okay we're getting into foolish territory <laughs> oh, this is very bad um sometimes every once in a while oh by the way i'm sorry behind i think you hear that noise well that's people need to do their work and i'm just talking so anyway but sometimes you hear in the news about a ferry that sort of crashed <laughs> i this is people get hurt I, I'm sorry for laughing but it just I don't know it's how it happens so you hear of this ferry that crashed and I have been on ferries that have bumped a bit hard and a couple of times I've seen people and they have staggered and I might even have mentioned it once but sometimes the people who have staggered I feel and remember this is just me being very petty about the whole thing I feel they deserved that uh, bit of shock and surprise. So, uh, as a plane goes overhead, I wonder what would happen if suddenly you have these two people who captain the ferries, and both of them are meant to be the smoothest ferry operators in the city. There's this sort of split. Even people who use the ferries are even saying, no, I prefer this one, and the other one says, I prefer that one and they have this intense competition and one day something just snaps in them and they decide man <laughs> they are going to show their mad skills on the ferry so they sort of take off and they instead of just going straight across they perform and sort of <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing they perform an acrobatic miracle across the river eye something that goes down in history as one of the greatest moments in in the annals of ferrydom so yeah i wonder what would happen okay then uh let me see there's the building that has the ministry of justice in it it also has it's like a collection of buildings so you imagine a block that has been sort of sculpted and then the pieces which are left over have been treated or given different kinds of facades so that building it looks i think of is it tetris so what would happen if buildings had this ability i wonder what would happen if buildings had the ability to during the day so you get into your office and you're not meant to leave your office for a set period and the reason is not because they want to force you to work but it's because the office actually moves around the building so the joy would be you sort of get in it's like okay where's my office today so you get there and then when you leave it's like okay how do i get out so going to work would always be very very exciting and in the case of a hotel the rooms would sort of switch around and you'd have pandemonium and chaos but it would be really really joyful you know chaos and um yeah so that's an i wonder for that particular building which you will see let me think of another one okay i'm going to go all the way across the other side because you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cranes. There's a lot of construction work on that side. So I wonder what would happen if the cranes, again, believing everybody to be asleep, got into this kind of groovy dance routine, you know, that they had, like, all the groups of cranes around the city actually have this nighttime competition for uh, synchronized dancing. And so if you're lucky enough on the right kind of night, I wonder how would you feel to be able to experience that live you know you wouldn't film it you know that would be the deal they'd send a message into your head watch it don't film uh, it's like that kind of thing you should carry as a memory to pass on to friends and offspring etc etc so i wonder what would happen there okay having left that somewhere in the same line of sight and you have to see it because if you see the cranes in the slow-mo then in the foreground, you'll see two sort of huts-like
buildings. They're probably a bit larger than you think. One is a house and the other is a greenhouse. So I wonder what could happen if that greenhouse, just like I believe there was, you know, the follow-up to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory was the great glass elevator or something like that. So supposing this greenhouse had read the book, um, worked out a complete set of plans and figured out how to take off one afternoon and so you'd have certain people in there who generally didn't know each other so they'd come in to inspect whatever was in the greenhouse and at that moment the greenhouse would just take off and go on this mega adventure and the end result of the adventure of course would be that the people who initially didn't like each other they kind of bond and they learn a lot about life from one another and eventually yes they do get back all wiser and wealthier than and wealthy not in money but in sort of wisdom and just a sense of who they are on the planet so that's actually that would be a very nice i wonder um let us see what else ah yes a damn tower of course i need to do an i wonder about a damn tower so well this, <laughs> this is again i'm sorry it's foolish but it is what it is this is live podcasting do you hear that it is live podcasting Okay, I wonder, you know the square bit, when you look on Adam Tower, you have the square bit. And when things were more normal, or in the old ways or whatever, you'd see people swinging on it and supposing that particular square bit felt, look, I don't believe I'm being appreciated fully. You know, I, I need to teach people a lesson. And so it decided to start spin, <laughs> spinning around. <laughs> So it wouldn't spin fast enough to throw anyone off, not of course, but it would spin around, to, you know, enough to worry people. And of course, the lifts would have to shut down during the spin period. And, you know, I wonder what would happen. I wonder what the media would say about that. You know, what would you'd get all these experts on television explaining, no, this is the reason it happened to that. Yet the reason would be just simple architectural emotions buildings do feel things and i'm sure you felt that you used to feel it as a child so i'm telling you i'm giving you free license to feel it again though if at the time of feeling a building's emotions you're doing something rather strange i would prefer it that you do not mention me in any way okay don't mention this podcast just deal with what happens i've been there look i'm alive i'm breathing so it can't be that bad okay i'm now heading into the final stretch of i wonders why is it the final stretch the reason is my brain is a simple brain and it can only do a few things for very short periods and once it's done those things it's simply the the world of foolishness maybe i stay on and stay foolish but no i, I try not to okay or maybe i'm already being foolish um uh no yeah i had this thing i thought shall i edit that out and i said no be honest uh take the pain yes i wonder one of the last i wonders or maybe not i wonder what would happen if somebody was waiting for the ferry and they suddenly got it into their head you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to walk across. And so they simply went down and walked across the water as if nothing the matter was wrong, as if it was the most normal thing to do in life. And everybody would be like, what did you see that? How on earth did they do that? And they'd get to the other end and they wouldn't know how they'd done it. And if they tried to do it again, they'd sink immediately. So it would be one of those moments where your mind simply took over and allowed your body to do things that were quite impossible. And I'm quite sure many of us have had, sort of, have dreamt of doing the impossible. <laughs> I mean, sometimes the impossible could be very banal, such as passing an exam for which we have not studied. You know, you can't pass. You, but I, I was a dream of ideas that would get me through. No, they all failed. Anyway, so that's the, uh, the, the one. So the person suddenly got it into their head to do something to achieve the impossible, and that was walk across the river eye that would be a nice i wonder um i have the i don't know what that you have these columns that stick out of the water the the sort of gray and the top of them are white and they have this sort of nozzly bits oh i i don't know what they're called but boats can anchor to these things i believe anyway 
they're very quiet. They're always sort of standing there as if they're watching everything that goes on and they say nothing about it. But I wonder what happens again when they believe we're not around. Do they start gossiping about everything they've seen? They just say, that boat, that boat is such a show-off. Just, and they just go on about boats and the good old days and how things are different. And they just have a right old sort of colomic whinge about absolutely everything. I wonder what that would sound like. Would it be sort of high-pitched? I mean, what would such object sound like? I think it, it would be a sort of um, gongy kind of sound. But of course, that's just me. Okay, um, let's see. I'm now desperately... Ah, that's one. So I wonder what would happen. I'm now looking north and there's a bunch of trees between... I hope the wind isn't too much, sorry. There's a bunch of trees between a set of buildings. So I wonder what would happen if trees could just sort of get their groove on and decide, let's say, once a month, they'd have these color explosions and they would just change color. So there'd be like this hour between, let's say it's only in the summer months, so this hour between seven and eight, and the trees would just simply keep changing color, and people would just get wowed. And so the idea being that if you saw that, it would just be so incredibly cool. It would make you feel so good. You could never really get your bad feelings on. You know, they, it kind of blew away all bad feelings. So I wonder how great the world would be if that was the case with the trees, they could do that. Um, I'm looking for something I wondery. I mean, I see sort of way over at the back, these yellow, so I mentioned the other columns, the gray and uh, white ones, so you have these yellow ones. And so there, one, two, three, four of them. So I wonder what would happen if they decided to do a sort of musical dance. So they'd go up and down and they'd sort of sound like these really deep steam whistles and they'd have this song and they of course would again it would be this sort of ritual thing so it would only happen once every so often i don't know what the so often would be uh, it, it would be a daily thing and then you just have people they'd even invent a religion to the four yellow pipes there'd be four yellow pipists hundreds maybe thousands of four yellow pipists who would gather to listen to this melody you know once a day and it would fill them with sort of general good vibrations. They would go out and do wonderful things, uh, help make the world a better place, of course. Okay, um, I believe on that melodious note, haha, that's a nice one, uh, I am going to shut down for now. I'm going to enjoy the sunshine for a little bit, and I hope you're having a good time, uh, and talk to you again soon.